Hi, I'm Bob Rice, and today we're going to cover P-only control. First, let's start with the equation for P-only control. So a P-only controller is the controller output is equal to some bias value, which is a starting value of your controller, plus your controller gain value, in this case it's Kc, times whatever your error is. This is the equation for a P-only controller. But what does this controller gain represent? How do you change it to change the behavior and performance of a controller response? Well, let's take a look at what a set point change would look like from this controller's perspective. So if we start with a set point change, so this is our set point, and our process variable starts down here, we have essentially no error, right? This error term, this portion of our equation, is error is equal to the set point minus the measurement. So at this moment right here, we have no error. So if you think about what this equ equation represents, when we have no error, this term over here on the right drops to nothing. And all we're left with is the controller output is equal to the bias value or the starting position. So we essentially have a controller output that starts at, let's just say, 50%. Right? It just starts at 50%. All of a sudden, we make a set point change, and we've introduced error into the equation. So now that we have error, it's whatever that error is times your gain. So what you get is a step to the output. Right? If this is your controller output value, and the output is equal to the bias plus the gain times the error, when I introduced error, a la the set point changed, Right, set point is up here, process variable is down there, there's some sort of error. The error times the gain is our correction. And our process variable is gonna to start to go up. Right? We've opened the valve to try to bring that flow up to the target. So our process variable starts to move up. Well, what happens to our error as our process variable gets closer to our set point? The error starts to drop. Right? So when the error starts to drop, whatever the error is times the gain, it starts to drop. So you start to see your controller output backing down. Now, if we backed all the way back down to where we started from, that's probably not a good thing, right? Because remember, a 50% controller output position actually caused a process variable to be down here. So if we did that, right, theoretically the controller, the, sorry, the process variable would actually drop back down to here. Well, that's clearly not what we want, right? So as the process variable starts to maybe move back down, we introduce error and it kind of adds on to the output. And so what you end up with is a controller response that kind of looks something like this, right? And this up here is probably gonna look something like that, right? So now we have a process variable that's moved up. There's a little bit of offset here, which means we can't actually get to the set point. Why can't we get to the set point? Well, if our process variable magically gets up to the set point, that means we have no error. We have no error, which means the output is equal to the bias, which again means our controller output comes down here, which means that a P-only controller will generally give you offset, which means that if you move the set point off of the value that was kind of the bias position or the baseline position, as you start to move that set point, the process variable can't achieve that because as you get closer, the error starts dropping and this term starts to go away and you're only left with the bias and you start back here, right? That's gonna be your traditional type of flow response or a, a heat exchanger. But there are some interesting examples of loops where a P-only controller may not actually have any offset, all right? Let's assume we have an, act, an application that's a sealed jacketed reactor, right? We've got a, a batch system, and the only thing that we have in here is we have steam. So we're adding steam into the jacket around it, and we're just measuring the temperature inside of that system. We're gonna charge the reactor, we're gonna fill it, and then we close it, right? We don't add any more liquid. It's not continuously coming through and out. It's basically a batch reactor, it's sealed, all right? Now let's say we want that temperature to go from temperature A to temperature B, right? And we're gonna start at controller output of 0%, right, 0%. So we start at say 30 degrees and we wanna to go to 50 degrees C, right? 
Well, at the beginning here, we have no error. And all of a sudden, we now have an error when we change the set point, right? Same thing has happened over here. Our controller output's gonna jump, which means we're gonna add steam into the system, right? We introduce heat, and the heat starts to make the temperature rise, right? It's a very, very slow process, so it takes a little while to get there, right? As we get closer and closer to temperature, this actually drops back down again, right? And so if we get up to temperature like this, our steam is gonna be back at zero. Now, how did I get to that new temperature? Well, this is a slightly different type of process. What's interesting about it, if this was a perfectly insulated vessel, any of the heat we add stays in the system, right? So I introduce heat to get the temperature to come up, then as I stop removing heat, it's not like the temperature is really gonna drop, it's just gonna stop going up. So by moving it back to zero here, we actually have a balanced system. So this would be true for some batch temperature applications, some level control applications, systems where there's really only one steady type condition, right? One balancing point, all right? So P-only control has its place, but most applications you're gonna find, especially things like flow and temperature, you're gonna end up with this offset, which is not a good behavior. Other applications like batch temperature control uh, and some applications where you're only adding steam, there's no cooling here, just steam. A P-only controller can actually be, be uh, beneficial. Also some level applications, P-only control is actually kind of nice, right? So a P-only controller is a very simple application of just looking at the error in the controller gain, right? It's not useful for applications like flow and temperature, but can be useful for applications like level and batch reactors, all right? So thank you for your time today. This was a quick section on P-only control. Mm -hmm.